a very good morning and a blessed Christmas to you all. My name is Vincent and we're all so glad you've managed to join us this morning, whether you're in the building or at home. Now Christmas is very different this year. We can't gather as we normally would, we're unable to see everyone we'd like to. The new year isn't looking as happy as we had hoped. But I want to reassure you that there is much which is the same as always, for we are still remembering the same Lord Jesus, who was born to save his people from their sins. We're still rejoicing in the same God, who so loved the world that he gave us his beloved Son. And we're still trusting in those same promises of that very first Christmas so long ago in Bethlehem. And so this morning, for all this and much more, let us pray. Almighty Father, we pray that you will be at work now within us this morning, powerfully by your Spirit, as we rejoice in your Son. Help us to find true comfort in him for our crying, true joy for our sighing and true peace in the Lord who was born in Bethlehem, both now and forever, in his name. Amen. Now, I invite Lynn to come and light the Christmas candle as a way to remember Christ, the light of the world. We light this Christmas candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lynn. Now, usually on Christmas Day, we will be filled with excited families and children, and it's always so great to hear their happy voices sing. And so this year, we're so grateful to St Anne's Heath School for sharing with us some videos to enrich our Christmas service today. You can find them all in full on our YouTube page, but we'll be hearing sections from each of their bubbles today, starting now, as the Year 5 bubble help us to call on the light of the world to shine in us. Thank you so much, Year 5 Bubble. And now, let us stand, if we can, as we sing our first carol together, Silent Night, led for us by the McLaughlin family. And a reminder, if you're here in the building, I'm sorry you can't sing out loud, and a reminder that if you're at home, please sing extra loud on our behalf. Oh, yes. 
Oh, thank you so much for leading us in that carol. Christmas, of course, is not just a celebration of the new beginnings we have in Christ, but it is also at this time of the year when we think back on what has been and pray for God's forgiveness and help to live better lives, lives more like the Lord Jesus in the year to come. And so let us prepare our hearts to hear God's word by confessing our sins together to him. And we will use the words on the screen. Together we pray. O oh God, be merciful to me, for by your Son I make my plea. Wash me and make me pure within, and cleanse, O oh, cleanse me from my sin. My wrong to you I now confess, as grief and guilt my soul oppress, for I have sinned against your grace and saw provoked you to your face. But in your love your Son was born in Bethlehem on Christmas morn, that from his flesh pure blood would flow and wash me whiter than the snow. So gracious God, my heart renew and make my spirit right and true, and your salvation's joy impart to fill me with a willing heart. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins by the blood of your Son, and serve you with a quiet mind by the help of your Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Father, we pray now that you would bless the reading of your word. The first reading is taken from Isaiah 7, verses 13 to 17. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey, when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Well, can I add my welcome to you this Christmas Day? Um, we're sorry we're not all together here in church to gather and think about the Christ child of Christmas, but I really hope that as you, you watch this on the screen, that there'll be a real sense that you're focusing upon Jesus at this Christmas time. And my prayer for you is that Christ will be around your dinner table with you, uh, in your living room, amongst your friends and family, even as you share it, over Zoom, and, th and that you might know Jesus close to you at these challenging times. We're in uh, the account of Jesus' birth that, that we've had read from Matthew, and uh, each of the Gospel writers has a slightly different emphasis and take, and I want us to think about the names that are used to describe the Christ of Christmas. Um, in both accounts, uh, Luke, we were thinking about a couple of days ago at our traditional carol service, and here in Matthew, um, there are angels. The angels appear first to Mary and then to Joseph. Now, uh, this was how the children on Sunday thought that the angels of Christchurch, Virginia Water should be depicted. I think I'm flattered. Um, but the, the angelic appearances are there to assure both Mary and Joseph that what is going on, though extraordinary, has God's hand in it. Uh, Mary knew that by natural means she couldn't be pregnant and, and therefore was understandably bemused that an angel would come and announce the expected birth of the Messiah through her. And similarly, Joseph also knew that a baby couldn't come through normal means and thought he might quietly divorce uh, uh, Mary. But the angels are there to say, no, God is at work. And I hope that the message of Christmas delivered through your messengers will give you comfort and joy and assurance that God is in this, even in our complicated COVID Christmas. Well, um, I, I've been sharing some cracker jokes. I like this one. Why were Mary and Joseph not with their family at Christmas? And the answer is there was no Zoom at the inn. There are plenty more of those, but I will spare you. Um, and I want us to get into the sort of countdown to Christmas. You know, we've been building up to it over the weeks, and, and Advent, whilst primarily about Jesus' second coming in glory, also encourages us to expect the day when there will be a saviour who will rescue us, um, and hence Christmas uh, association as well. Well, you know how Countdown on TV works, and here's a little taster and a quiz for you. So, here's your word. How are you doing? How many words can you make with how many letters? Think hard. You there yet? Time's running out. Okay, how did you do? Well, what did you manage to get? Um, well, here's a couple of possible thoughts. Amen is there in there. Menu. But of course, you're well-educated Bible people, and it is Christmas after all. So the word that I was really thinking about was Emmanuel. And did you notice in this reading that... Um, Joseph is encouraged to call this son Emmanuel, which means God with us. And, and this presence of God in the form of a human person was promised back in Isaiah chapter 7 and, and possibly even had some immediate application in Isaiah's time. 
But primarily, we're told that if we know, want to know God up close and personal, we need the Jesus of Christmas. God, as it were, becomes a human among us to show us what God is like and to take us back. I, I mentioned the other day the, the quote from Spurgeon that the infinite became infant. God took on human flesh. Jesus is God's Christmas present to you. He is among you. And I don't know about you, but that thought is incredibly encouraging, isn't it? I mean, at one level, you know, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, they were fearful initially. But then they heard the songs of joy and gladness. And often the reaction of people when God comes close in the Bible, it is one of fear because God is almighty and God is holy and God is perfect. And we are none of those things. But actually Christmas tells us that God, though he be holy and perfect and powerful, humbles himself and comes in a vulnerable baby in innocuous situations, in a difficult time in the Roman Empire, born in a spare room in a full inn, and God comes among us so we might know God's presence. And, and I'm praying for you as a congregation that in the complexities and difficulties of the world that we're living in, as we face sorrow, grief, and loss, that you too would know Emmanuel, God with us. But there are also other names that are given to Jesus, and one of them is mentioned, actually, in our passage in Matthew chapter 1. This little ditty might help you. My first is in joy, but I'm not a girl, but a boy. Well, it's not difficult, and what do you expect the preacher to be talking about other than the name of Jesus? She will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. Now, there may be more recent children's programs. My kids are a bit older now, but you know these two characters, Bob the Builder and Postman Pat, and it's pretty clear from their name what they do. Well, and though a trivial example, actually names in the Bible work a bit like that. Jesus is his name, and the name Jesus actually has a long pedigree. Um, it's the word Joshua, the name Joshua in the Old Testament. And it means, and in fact, Matthew chapter 2 explains this, that the Lord saves. So we're very familiar with, with Jesus' name, but it's not like that's his Christian name as such. Uh, rather, it is a title, as it were, for what he would come to do. The first thing the angels think they, you need to know when God comes among you is that you need to be saved. You need to be rescued. And so even at Christmas time, we're thinking about a tree, not, not actually what we traditionally have as a Christmas tree, but rather the tree that Jesus will die on, that he was born on a rescue mission to save us from our sins. And he will die on the cross so that all who put their trust in him may know forgiveness and cleansing from guilt and may know his presence dealing with all their need and their sin. So that's his, his name. He will be called Jesus. And he does have one other name, and it's not actually directly in this passage, but in several other of the passages. And to illustrate it, I'm going to pull a cracker. And I'm going to do it in a very COVID-secure manner, which is how we're all going to be pulling out crackers today, isn't it? Like that. All on my own. But you know what you usually have in a cracker? And I'm hoping this one delivers as well. There's usually a toy uh, or a little present. And we thought about the real presence of Christmas is Jesus's present. There's also a joke. 
And I'm not even gonna read this one because I've already given you a far superior Christmas joke. But perhaps intriguingly, more significantly, we have in every cracker a crown. Well, why do we have a crown? Admittedly not a terribly precious one, just made of paper, but we have a crown. And I think that I would hope that when people pull that cracker, that they'll remember that there really is a king who is on the throne, but who came among us at Christmas. And actually, that king is Jesus the Christ. Christ is, is not like it's his, Jesus' his surname. Christ or Messiah means the anointed one, um, which was the title that was given to the king. And it was long expected that among them would come one who would be the sovereign God himself, the king, the anointed one, who would execute that rescue mission. Well, we've been thinking about the names of Jesus. And I hope this will help you remember the true significance of Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. How is God with us? Well, because he came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus, who would be for us, die on the cross in our place, and Christ, who is over us as our King and Sovereign. Christmas means God with us, God for us, and God over us. My hope is that this Christmas time, you may know Jesus ruling over you, forgiving you of your sin, and being up close and personal. I hope you'll give some thought to that at some point over this Christmas period, and I hope that you will maybe take the chance to perhaps read these stories in the gospel for yourself and to come personally to bow your knee and pay your homage to King Jesus, that you may know him as your king, as your savior, as your friend, and that he would be present with you this Christmas time. If we can do anything to help you with that, please drop me a note I'd like to send you a little booklet that explains the Christian faith a little bit further. But for now, let me pray. Saviour Jesus, our King and Ruler, we just bow our heads in your presence. Thank you that you deigned and humbled yourself to come close to us. This Christmas time, may we know your presence up close and personal. And as we're filled with anxieties, doubt and guilt, please meet with us this Christmas for your honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you very much, Simon. The birth of Jesus, God made man, is one of the great pillars of our Christian faith. So let us now stand, if we are able, as we confess that faith together, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Oh, please do remain standing as the year six bubble leads us in a song that reflects on the wonders of this Jesus, our Saviour. And if you do know it, please, if you're at home, join. Now, Akil will lead us in a time of intercessory prayer. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, we give you thanks on this Christmas day above all days as we celebrate the day of your arrival among us in the form of an ordinary man, but as no ordinary man, to fulfill your long-awaited promise to reconcile us to you in the only way possible. We give thanks for this mighty God who walked among us, this wonderful counsellor who spoke directly to us, this Prince of Peace who died for us. So we need no longer walk in darkness about who you are, why you made us, why we live in a suffering world and how we can overcome it. Because in him, we can see now clearly how we can enter into a relationship with you for which we were created and come to live in the creation you intended for us where there will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. As we stand before you, Father, at the end of a year traumatized by COVID-19, when all that is wrong with this world and the spectre of death has confronted us all so directly, 
we give thanks for this certain hope of a better eternity that awaits all those who trust in Jesus. Lord, as we marvel at how the author of all creation, by whom all things were made, could possibly have humbled yourself to the point of entering your creation as an ordinary baby, entrusted to the care of an ordinary carpenter and his wife, that you would save us from, from sentimentalizing or trivializing or mythologizing the most remarkable event in the real history of the world. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, that in this extraordinary event, you fulfilled all the promises you had made about how you would reconcile us thousands of years before. Help us to believe that this happened, why this happened and what it means for each of us. Help us, Heavenly Father, to make this day not mainly about turkey and stuffing, or about presents and partying, or even about family and friends, but about a day when we celebrate the greatest day in history, great because you came down to earth, and great because by coming to earth you reconciled us to you. Thanks also, Heavenly Father, for the privilege of being among those living at a time in history when Jesus' first arrival on earth is behind us as opposed to being ahead of us, and we can go to the Bible to encounter him for ourselves and look forward to him coming again once more, fulfilling the promises you have made to us as surely as the promises about the first coming of Jesus. Lord God, we pray that those among our family and friends who don't yet know the peace and assurance of a reconciled relationship to you would consider afresh, or maybe even for the first time, the invitation of our Lord Jesus to everyone to call on him as their Lord and Saviour and recognise the error of living lives that assume that there is no God and no day when we will be held to account for all that we have thought, said and done through our lives. Equally, we pray for those who wrongly assume there is a God, but they can rely on themselves when held to account by him. On that day of judgment, we pray, Heavenly Father, that all those we know and love would rely on Jesus and Jesus alone for their salvation. Lord, we pray that no one watching this service would be among those who would be able to say to us on that day that they never heard because we never told them. Lord, we pray for our own church here in Christ Church, Virginia Water. We give thanks for all the ways in which you have blessed the life and ministry of this church in this year, unlike any we have known. We give thanks for the continuation of the ministry of the church virtually online throughout the year. We give thanks for the opportunity that has provided for the faithful teaching ministry of this church to reach a much wider audience than ever before and for the lives that have been transformed as a result of it. We give thanks that you have entrusted the leadership of our ministry into the hands of those that are equipped to teach from scripture clearly and uncompromisingly. We pray the ministry of Christ Church Virginia Water would continue to be a powerful instrument for bringing all who encounter it to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Finally, we pray also today for all those in our church family and beyond who are alone or separated from their loved ones this Christmas or suffering in any way. We pray that on this Christmas day of all days, in the midst of their loneliness and suffering, you would fill them with all the hope that we celebrate today when the light of the world entered our midst to lead us out of the darkness that would otherwise engulf us and out of the loneliness, suffering and death from which, which we could not otherwise escape. Can we finish by saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please do stand now for our final carol in which Steve will lead us. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much, Steve. That was wonderful. We have a couple of announcements to make today. The first announcement is this. We would like you to make a New Year's resolution. And we're hoping it will either be a resolution to sign up for Christianity Explored, that's starting in February. It's ideal for you if you're new to Jesus or if you just muddled about it all and, and you need to get back to what it's all about. Or perhaps if that's not you, perhaps your New Year's resolution should be to join a connect group. It's a really good way to keep on growing in your knowledge of Jesus and loving and encouraging other Christians. So for this New Year's resolution, please can you consider either joining Christianity Explored or becoming part of a Connect group. And all of these at present are over Zoom online. Other thing to let you know is that we are going to be staying online only for the next two Sundays as we work out how best to love everyone in these difficult times. But if you need to talk to someone, please do get in, in touch because we'd love to chat and pray with you over the phone. Now on behalf of Simon, the vicar and all the team here at Christchurch, our deepest thanks to all of you, particularly for the ways each one of you has contributed so much in a difficult year especially for how you've loved, supported, prayed for and helped one another as each has had need. May the Lord grant you all a very blessed Christmas and a new year overflowing with comfort and joy in every way. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Christmas and always. Stop it.